Before explaining the concept of isoquants, I would like to recall what we studied in the second chapter. In the second chapter, we studied about consumption analysis. And we also saw about indifference curves. What are indifference curves? Indifference curve is the locus of all combination of commodities from which the consumer derives the same level of satisfaction. So the, here we have two commodities, but it gives the same level of satisfaction to the consumer. Indifference curve is also called as iso-utility curve. So in consumption analysis, we studied about the behavior of consumer and the satisfaction of consumer's wants. Here we study about production. Production is the process where we use the factors of production. Production is done by the producer. So what are isoquants? Production function may involve at a time the use of more than one variable input. Sometimes we use more than one variable input. So this is presented with the help of an isoquant curve. So here we have two words, iso and quant. Iso and quant, it's derived from the Greek language. Iso means equal and quant means quantity. So in our presentation, only two factors, labor and capital are used. So in economics, an isoquant is a curve drawn by joining the combination of changing the quantities of two or more inputs which give the same level of output. So in isoquants, we will be using more than two variable inputs or two variable inputs giving the same amount of output, same level of output. We, are be, we will be using capital and labor, different combinations of capital and labor, but the output will be the same. So that is what is called as isoquant. So an isoquant curve can be defined as the locus of points representing various combination of two inputs capital and labor yielding the same amount of output. The isoquant curve is also called as equal product curve or product indifference curve. So Ferguson has defined isoquant as an isoquant curve showing all possible combination of inputs physically capable of producing a given level of output. So isoquant curve shows all possible combination of inputs. And the inputs are capable of producing a given level of output. If you look at this tableau column, you will be able to understand it better. Here we have two inputs, labor and capital. So, in this column, we have units of labor and in this column, we have the units of capital. So, combination A shows 2 units of labor and 30 units of capital. Combination B shows 4 units of labor and 22 units of capital. C, 6 units of labor and 16 units of capital. Likewise, D shows 8 units of labor and 12. E shows 10 units of labor and 10 units of capital. So if you follow this uh, tabular column, you see that as the units of labor increases, the units of capital decreases. So units of labor increases from 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. Whereas the units of capital decreases from 30, it comes to 10. So why does the units of labor increase and the units of capital decrease? Because each combination gives the same level of output. If you have two labors and 30 capital, the output is 40. 
suppose if you have the same amount of labor and the same amount of units then the output will be different here we are having different combinations but the output of cloth is the same purinjada units of labor 2 30 a irukumbodhu output is 400 units of labor 4 22 a irukumbodhu output vandu 400 suppose if we have 4 units of labor and 30 units of capital maybe the output of cloth will be more or sometimes it will be less also if there is dis economies then it will be less if there is economies it will be more economies means advantages and dis economies means disadvantages which is seen within the firm or outside the firm we have studied about that earlier so units of labor and capital are changing here but the output of cloth remains the same this is only called as iso quant equal quantity equal amount of output but the combinations of input are different so an iso quant curve showing all possible combinations we have five possible combinations here but it's capable of producing a given level of output but the output here is the same 400 400 400 there is no change in the output so what are the assumptions for isoquants it is assumed that only two factors are used to produce a commodity so we are going to use only two inputs what are the two inputs labor and capital so that is the first assumption it is assumed that only two factors are used to produce a commodities second one factors of production can be divided into small parts the factors of production can be divided that is the uh, units of labor and capital can be divided into small parts technique of production is constant there is no change in the production technology the substitution between the two factors is technically possible you can substitute one factor for another which is technically possible under the given technique factors of production can be used with maximum efficiency so these are the assumptions of isoquants so first you have to define isoquants or you can also give an introduction for isoquants then you have to give the assumption next let us see the tabular column so here we have five combinations of units of labor and capital but the output the quantity of output is the same 400 400 400 that's why it is called as iso quant equal amount of quantity based on this tabular column we can draw the graph on the x axis this is x on the x axis we plot the labor and on the y axis we have the capital so what are the units of labor 2 4 6 8 and 10 so one unit represents two units of labor on the y axis we have marked the capital they have marked as 10 12 16 22 and 30 whatever is given in the tabular column they have straight away marked it in the graph but actually in the graph paper when you take the units must be the same if you take 10 it must be 20 30 40 like that but in our economics book they have marked it like this so you can also mark it in the same way 10 12 16 22 and 30 so what is the first combination the first combination is 2 units of labor is 2 and capital is 30 so this is combination a this is b combination b is 4 laborers and capital is 22 units next is Six units of labor and sixteen units of capital. So this is point C. This is D. Then you have E. So if you join all these points A, B, C, D, E, you get a curve. This curve is called as the isoquant curve. It is abbreviated as IQ. IQ IQ means isoquant curve here 
according to the tabular column the output is 400 so we have marked 400 here we are able to understand so this is an isoquant curve so with the help of this tabular column you are able to draw the isoquant curve so it is seen from the table that the five combinations of labor units and units of capital yield the same level of output. In the table of the table, there is a combination of labor combination of labor and capital, but the output is the same. This is only called as an isoquant curve. An equal product curve represents all those combinations of two inputs. N inputs labor and capital which are capable of producing the same level of output, output available 400. So, an ISO product curve can be drawn with the help of ISO quant schedule. This is called as a ISO quant schedule. With the help of this ISO quant schedule, we were able to draw a ISO quant curve or it can also be called as ISO product curve. ISO product curve, ISO quant curve, LMA, Unida. So, in the table, we will see the isoquant curve. So, we will see the KLVK. Explain isoquant curve with the help of a diagram means you first have to give an introduction, then definition, assumption, tabular column, tabular column explanation, graph and graph explanation. Okay. Next is isoquant map. What is an isoquant map? Do you remember an indifference curve map? Indifference curve map means a set of indifference curves. A group of indifference curves are called as indifference curve map. Likewise, isoquant map. Here you have a set of isoquant curves. So, an isoquant map has different isoquant curves representing the different combinations of factors of production yielding the different levels of output. So, uh, the first uh, curve output is 100. Second curve would be 100, uh, output is 200. Third curve 300. Fourth curve 400. So, IQ1 indifference curve 1. IQ2 indifference curve 2. IQ3 indifference curve 3. IQ4 indifference curve 4. So, here you have a set of a group of indifferent curves. So, uh, I am sorry, isoquant curves. So, group of isoquant curves are called as isoquant map. So, an isoquant map has different isoquant curves representing the different combinations of factors of production. So, in the factors of production would be combination different. In the different combination, in the different combination. Because of the different combinations only, you are able to get different levels of output, 100, 200, 300 and 400. So, in simple term, an isoquant map is a family of isoquants. In other words, if more than one isoquant is drawn in a diagram, it is called as isoquant map.